Good morning everyone. In today's video I will show you how to array an object on um, any type of polygon you have, whether it's a, a hexagonal uh, or a pentagon that you can create here in Revit, or any group of a straight lines. Actually I get the idea from uh, uh, from one of one of the comments that I get from one of my subscribers here and it's exactly in, in, in this video on arraying a rotating object uh, this the the question was based that uh, the required to you know create an array based on an edges object with or uh, uh, an actual regular polygon and whether we can do that uh, based on a group of straight lines so uh, anyway, it's this video is I'm not, I'm not gonna build each node from scratch and connect them, but I'm rather gonna be building the whole thing on those two videos, which is array and object along the path, and the one that I get the comment on, which is array and rotating an object along a graph. In both cases, the the available was just a curved continuous line, and in this specific video, I'll try to show you how to do it on a polygon or a group of straight lines uh, to facilitate your work. Anyway, uh, so what I what I did is you just draw a, a polygon here. Just uh, it's a, just a regular uh, model line base. Uh, you can go with any type of edges you want. I also tried a group of uh, component in place uh, component actually, and and I just placed those furniture around and just tried to see how it works. Uh, I tested that on a group of object and it was like uh, successful on uh, the majority of them. Uh, the way I did it is just based, as I said, on the previous nodes or previous two videos that I show you. But anyway, to refresh your memory, it's uh, you have to choose uh, a select element, and this guy is basically, you know, the, uh, the the piece of furniture in it. So I will just go ahead and uh, change that, and I can select this one. And this is the object actually that you're gonna get and rotate an array around the object around the, the polygon or the hexagonal that you have and in the second part of the selection model i have uh, <clears throat> the uh, select model elements and it, now it's a group and instead of previously it was just one and you can just go ahead and uh, select you know the the path which is technically a group of separated line as you know, when you create that in the in the model line, it will be a separated, and when you hit run, it will just you know distribute that on it, and you can just repeat that on any object, and then you're gonna see that the result is you know uh, gonna be distributed on that object, and the other the other thing is you know you just select this one, and you get the you know the chair instead. Uh, that's a single element selection while this one is a group of elements and you're gonna get this result as you can see anyway uh, so what happening here this is this is just a basic uh, uh, Revit family selection which is goes uh, for element dot element type so you can get the type out of that the selected element and then you place it in a normal family instead by point which is the one that's going to distribute the family instance based on a group of points that you specify here in Revit. Those points, so that's the family type, those points are the one actually important, so nothing in you, the same technique we have in the previous video. Just feel free to go back to the videos and have a look of what I've done. The points, uh, which is really important, what's happened here is I'm going to select those, you know, those lines, a group of uh, separated lines, and then uh, I'm gonna get the element dot curve out of those. I just hide them because you know uh, uh, this will be multiple copies of a preview here in there in, in, in Dynamo. And I don't want that to be, you know, heavy on my machine. Again, I'm flattening them, so I'm getting you know the or the the way they just been you know organized uh, in a in a sub list to be canceled and you know placed in one uh, simpler list. And then I'm going to make a polygon by join curve to make all those as one element and again I just turn it off uh, now I will take that polygon uh, which is a continuous object and then I will divide it by using point on equal segment length and the division that I get is the one that you provide here in this slider so I just pick 10 
and I'm using one minus a as I did in the previous video to get a nine copies because I want to separate it the first one here and I'm getting it actually uh, by a scare dot start point and with the explanation for this is well uh, illustrated and well described in the previous video but, but anyway uh, because it's usually going to go and, and, and divide on equal segment not a chord so it should be a minus one and that's why to exclude the point outside this to make it work perfectly and then you have to include it by a separated chord by a start point in order to give them back or to get them back in the same list you have to create uh, again list.create and as you can see this is a different way of organizing so that's the first point on that the second list for the whole thing came from the uh, the division uh, curve so you have to flatten them in order to get to get the points in a regular order then you feed those points uh, based on that polygon to the family by any instance which is by, by itself so if you just highlight that uh, which by itself will create you know you see those points which is by itself again the family in a sense will distribute the copy of the chair in my case on each one of those so if I was uh, you know getting rid of this and I had run and it should be uh, you know it should you know cancel the rotation and by the way when you do or when you actually deal with uh, such a case it's, it's really a good idea to delete uh, from time to time otherwise you are not gonna get uh, the correct response and you can see now uh, it's well it's distributed again uh, and cancel the rotation so it will be a good idea to erase uh, the available or the created previously created family instance as it might not you know when it's going to be need to create a new one and when or which one is actually going to be rotated now what happened here is uh, is okay so you can uh, you just test that on a different uh, sample. I again uh, tested this on a group of uh, cases with a group of uh, previously loaded and previously made families and in some of them it's actually crushed and that's due to the nature of the uh, element itself and as you can see here uh, I believe it's worked nicely. Now the second half that's for the array on a selected object. I, I wish that would be sufficient for uh, the, the subscriber Paolo that asked this question and if uh, if the question goes further to the rotation part uh, again the second half of the uh, script goes for it so again I'm gonna start from the number of the points uh, the number of the copies actually on the on the polygon uh, here I added one don't ask me why it just happened with me uh, it's just a happy coincidence to discover that because when I just distributed the points uh, again uh, it, I started by the first and the end to be existed uh, as a zero and one zero and one on that polygon I think in here will technically create two chairs in the same place uh, and that need me after I flattened the whole thing in here is to get rid of the last one which is the one because it's the same as the zero to get an accurate result out of that uh, anyway so it should be 10 I'm not really quite sure to even count them the three five uh, six seven eight nine and ten beautiful uh, that's the first time I count them I was you know anyway so uh, line by tangency and again that's well explained in the previous video is just gonna create uh, a tangency line so we're gonna go here that help us to understand the rotation it's actually assuming at each point I'm gonna draw a tangency uh, so yeah maybe you're not you're not gonna get a happy results in here 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 specifically if you're talking about the rotation thing uh, that tangency uh, it's just a default one length or one unit or two units of a length based on each point on the curve and the parameter represent how much percentage so if it's a zero that's mean the start point and then 0.1, 10%, 20%, 30% of it. And that's why I removed the 100% because they've already been created. Uh, getting the start point and the end point of each one of those will help me to define a vector that way. So if I define the vector that way, I will compare it to the x axis. So I'm comparing, for example, this one to the x axis. So I get to know, you know, the, the rotation. I substitute, I think. Uh, the vector rotation 
I substitute this one, I think, with this. Uh, I think this one is better. It's giving me a full comparison with the 360 with a fi fixed pivot and the normal Z axis will be included. Rather, this one is just from 100, it's from 0 to 180. So this is, I think, the only jump and change that I created, really the important one, because it gives me a more accurate results. Gain here, uh, the 10 degrees that these 10 instants need to be rotated based on, I'm going to connect and I'm going to run. And as you can see, they are now starting, especially, you know, those in the middle actually facing correctly. Those might not get the result that you are dreaming of because it doesn't know uh, when you place this point even even in the uh, correct and uh, in the hypothetical condition this is uh, it could be you know as a tangency go that way or that way depend on how you look at it but it will never have the tangency that way which will place this as you know facing uh, this one or exact mirror of this one and same with this and this so if those two things was not really, you know, responding to the way, I believe it shouldn't respond to that. And you can refine that algorithm anyway by adding uh, something to specify that, but I, I would be, I, this would be much more complicated anyway. Now the issue with this script, uh, it, I tried it several times in a different cases. Uh, the majority of, uh, you know, when I change the family into this one, for example, the disk, it gives me a real headache and sometimes it crushes. Now it's not crushing, uh, that's really bad because when you want it to crush, it doesn't want to crush and when you don't want to crush, it's just, you know, that's crazy. I'm just going to change this to 8, uh, keep changing, ah oh, yeah, that's a crush, that's what I was looking for. And specifically with this one, uh, I believe that the rotation happening here against the point outside the object here because it's uh, it's a longitudinal uh, geometry and when I just substitute this with this one and I just hit run again it was it went back to the normal cases so I was you know just thinking that it might be something wrong with this family itself I don't know it was really working everything working okay uh, that's the case where I found that, you know, crushed. You, you really need to be careful not to select, when you get this one, you have to select only line, don't select any other, you know, 3D elements, uh, otherwise it's going to be uh, a big headache. Uh, as you can see here, it's, it's actually distributing the whole thing. Again, uh, correctly, except for the, you know, the edges, the, the corner, the elements at the edges, or at the corner, sorry. I did not. I did not actually try it on a group of lines, so I will try that for the first time uh, in here, and I'll see if I can get something you know make sense out of this in a, such a shape. I did not test that before actually when I designed the script. I should not try it now because I'm sure there will be something wrong. Anywho, so let's try. Uh, yeah, it's working, kind of, yep. And I think the only one thing is missing is that you need to add a copy of this dude here at the end. But for me, it's nice. It's still following the angle of the line. Even better because it's avoiding for somehow, by coincidence, the existence of the instance on the corners. You can just add, uh, God, you just can just remove this one. Where's that dude? Uh, right here, you know, because I dropped the last item and that give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh God, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it's already missing one for some reason. Probably you need to get back that drop again. So cancel this one and cancel this one probably to get the better result and by placing this one at the end of that. Anyway, uh, so how much we have, supposing we have 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay. So when you get back that, the extra copy, by removing this one, they will be 9. So in this case, yes, you have to remove this plus 1 from the formula to make it work in this way. So that will give us uh, a different option, and because 
if you are wondering why is that, because this is a closed loop in, in this method, uh, this is an open open line and that's a closed line, that's a loop. So when you define or when you use the polygon curve by joint curves, this will be a closed geometry as it's a start to this from this point and then goes all the way and then end in the same point. So definitely you don't want two objects or two two chairs to be sitting in the same spot. While in this dude the beginning and the end are totally separated points and they are not, you know, coincident in the same place. So in this case you really need to get rid of this one and add the last point to be you know actually or physically created here that's the only one thing you need to change in a case where you have a closed loop and an open loop anyway guys uh, thank you for watching and i wish that you find this video uh, useful uh, thank you and bye bye